Hello, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to hashtag What the Patriarchy, where we make a very strong effort to destroy, dismantle the patriarchy one Muslim feminist video at a time. Thank you for being here. This is Shahnaz. Today, I want to talk about a topic that many people might perceive as trivial, but I promise it's not trivial. I'll explain how so in just a bit. It's related to patriarchy because it's about the invalidation, the dismissal of little girls' feelings and their voices and their experiences. And I think very importantly, also their knowledge, because that carries them for the rest of their life, that sticks with them, stays with them for the rest of their lives. We shut them down. We, many, many grownups, many adults, shut way too many children down from the time that they're little kids, women, girls, from the time they're little kids, from the time they can form basic, simple, short sentences. We tell them that their knowledge, their knowledge is wrong. We gaslight them. We tell them that what they know is not the case because we are grownups. I'm a grownup. I am the adult here. And so by inherently, because I'm an adult, I know better. I know more. Not always the case, by the way. Grownups do not always know better than children or than little people. We make them second guess themselves from the time that they're little children. And then we're surprised when women second guess themselves or don't have as much confidence as they should. You see, I have a few nibblings, uh, nephews and nieces whom I adore to pieces. My little now five-year-old niece in, in particular, who's crazy about me and whom I'm crazy about, always asks me to visit her, to visit my parents' house when she's visiting my, my parents. I don't live too far from my parents' house. And so I'll say, okay, I'm coming. I'm going to come see you. I'll sometimes tell her, okay, I'm going to come tonight if I can go. And then she's so excited and she'll tell everybody, she'll go to my parents individually, go to my dad, go to my, go to my mom, go to her mom, go to anybody who'll listen to her that I'm coming home tonight. They call me Shanu. And they'll all say, oh, okay, cool, right? Um, just, to, just to entertain her, just to humor her. She'll get really excited. And then every few hours, she'll call me and say, how long, how far are you? When are you coming? When are you coming? And I'm, I'll update her. Uh, she now has a sense, a better sense of time than she did you know, a few months or years ago. And so I, she, can, she knows uh, she can keep track of, oh, now you have two hours left. Oh, now you have two days left. Oh, now you have three days left. And then a few hours later, I'll hear from her and she'll say, Mommy says you're not coming or person X says you're not coming. And I'm like, no, no, I'm coming. Um, and she's, and, but she gets really sad because and scared because she's like, wait, you told me you're coming and somebody else told me you're not coming. So she's confused. And I'm like, no, no, sweetie, I'm coming. I'm definitely coming. I do not lie to children. If I'm not coming, if I can't go, I'll tell her I can't go. Anyway, this one time I reach home and um, she's not there. And I, I ask around, I'm like, where is, where is this baby niece of mine? And I'm told, oh, she's at someone else's house. She went to visit the uncle's family because we didn't know you were coming. And so I'm like, but, but I, I heard her telling everybody on the phone that I was coming tonight. And I'm told, well, we didn't believe her. And I don't know why you wouldn't believe this child. And then and that they didn't believe me that I was coming or that they told, they thought I was just trying to appease this little child because she gets way too excited. Um, there's no such thing as too much excitement, by the way, especially for a child. And that they didn't know for real that I was coming. And so I, I let it go because nobody thinks it's a big deal that this child has been gaslit, right? As I think more and more about the, the little way and the big ways that we lie to children and that we expect other, other grownups to lie to children, I begin to realize that this manipulation, this gaslighting, this deception, this making women doubt themselves starts at a very, very, all of this starts at a very, very young age. You see, we're telling this child, this little five-year-old niece of mine, as she's so excitedly telling everybody that Shanu is coming. And I mean, again, I really cannot put into words how excited she gets. And I, I do get that excited. What we're telling her is you're lying or you have been lied to. What you're saying is not important. It's untrue uh, that an adult that you trust is lying to you. And all of this sticks with you for the rest of your life. And it also seeps into other areas of your life. And it contributes to the hurt, the rejection, the invalidation, the dismissal that you carry with you well into your adulthood for the rest of your life. The reason why I think this is a huge deal and not something trivial is this. What happens? 
when abused children tell us that they're being abused or molested or hurt? Do we believe them? What message are we sending them? If we're telling them that, hey, I'm not gonna believe you on something as simple and small and trivial as my aunt is coming and I'm so excited, what happens when the same child grows up to tell us, I'm hurting, I'm being abused, I'm being whatever's happening to me? Are we, are, are we sending them the message that I'm going to believe you and trust you and, and, and take your words seriously when you say it's happening? Or am I going to gaslight you and manipulate you and deceive you and tell you, no, that's not happening? So again, if we won't believe them in something as innocent as, hey, my aunt is coming to visit me today and I'm so excited and we shut this child down, we shut this excitement down and say, no, she's not coming, she's lying to you. And then later it is proven that indeed this child was telling the truth as was the aunt who promised them that they were coming. What message are we sending them about what this child's, what their, their voice means? about who they can turn to in times of need, to share good news with, to share bad news with, to share excitement with, to share hurt with. I, I can't not see the connection here because too, too many of us, too many adults, too many people in their 20s and 30s and 40s and beyond are still unable to share love with their families, to share good news with their families, to share, to share sad news, heartbreaks with their families. And I finally realized it's because when you're growing up and your voice is constantly dismissed, you are constantly dismissed. You have no reason but to think, well, I have, I, I don't want to share this good or bad news or whatever thing with them because they won't care. They won't take it seriously. They never showed any interest to begin with. I'm in my 30s and I'm still healing from the same treatment that I received as when I was around her age and really until like even now, right? And And it's, that the same grown-ups who are responsible for teaching us to not lie, to not deceive us, to not hurt us, are hurting us. And again, it's it's very, very simple. It's very trivial. It feels like something so small as, okay, calm down. What's the big deal about telling a child, actually, your, your aunt is lying to you? But what I'm trying to say is that we're dismissing this child's voice. We're ignoring this child's voice. We're deceiving her. We're, we're not only deceiving her ourselves, but we're also expecting other adults to deceive her. So we're surprised when an adult isn't deceiving her. We're confusing this child. I grew up to children being lied to, being, being disrespected, being insulted, having their abilities and intelligence constantly disrespected and dismissed. And these are the same grown-ups who hate being lied to themselves, who hate being manipulated and deceived and gaslit themselves. Why are we doing it to children if we don't like to have it done to ourselves. Anyway, I'll stop there, but you get the idea. Stop deceiving children. It is not a simple lie. It is something that will affect them for the rest of their lives in many, many, many er other areas of their life as they grow older. And it hurts. Thanks for watching.